Welcome to the video for Lecture 15, Section 2. This video will cover thermocouples. Thermocouples are part of thermoelectric thermometry. They are very commonly used to measure temperature in a wide variety of applications. This table summarizes some of the advantages and disadvantages of thermocouples. They are rigid and the dissimilar metal junctions are easy to make in the field. They can be used to measure temperature over a wide range for many common needs. The off-the-shelf precision is only plus and minus 1 degree Celsius, but they can be calibrated to greater precision. Thermocouples do have some disadvantages that need to be managed. In many cases, the disadvantages can be managed fairly easily, hence thermocouples are common devices. Thermocouple dissimilar metal junctions generate a small voltage or electromotive force based on temperature. Unfortunately, the relation between the electromotive force and temperature is nonlinear. We generally prefer sensors that have linear relations between the input and the output, but thermocouples have nonlinear relations. So the relation has to be found and used. Finally, thermocouples require a second reference temperature input. We will talk about reference temperature more later. So while thermocouples are common and the disadvantages need to be overcome. Let's begin with a bit of information about the physical principles behind thermocouples. The first principle is called the Seebeck effect that was discovered by Thomas Seebeck in 1821. He discovered that a current would flow in a circuit made of two dissimilar metals when the two dissimilar metal junctions were at different temperatures. So to have a Seebeck effect, you need two metal wires that are connected at the ends to make two dissimilar metal junctions, and the two junctions need to be at different temperatures, T1 and T2. Then you will get a current in the circuit. The Seebeck effect has some consequences if we want to use the principle to measure an unknown temperature. We need to know one of the temperature, which is called the reference temperature. In the old days, an ice bath at zero degrees Celsius was used as the reference temperature because it was fairly easy to create. We also need to know the relation between the two dissimilar metals and the electromotive force generated. Electromotive force can be abbreviated as EMF. Finally, we need a way to measure the current. Will adding a measuring device in the circuit mess up the system? A measuring device will add new dissimilar metal junctions, and they will generate EMFs too. The laws of thermoelectric circuits are used to summarize the relations needed to make thermocouples work as temperature sensors. There are three laws and three consequences. The law of homogeneous metal states that a current cannot be generated without having dissimilar metals. If you make a circuit with one homogeneous metal, you won't get any current flow. One consequence of the law of homogeneous metals is that the temperature along the homogeneous metal wires does not affect the EMF generated. That means that we don't need to worry about the temperature between the two junctions because the two wires are homogeneous and homogeneous metals do not generate any EMF as temperature changes. Conversely, if the wires used to make thermocouples are not homogeneous, if they are non-uniform in some way, then they might generate an EMF.
though the manufacture and handling of thermocouples needs to meet high standards to produce uniform metal wires. The second law, the law of intermediate metals, is given here. It basically says that if we have intermediate metals and multiple dissimilar metal junctions, the EMFs, they generate sum to zero if all the intermediate junctions are at the same temperature. So we can add equipment to the circuit, and as long as all of the equipment junctions are at the same temperature, the total EMF is zero, and it does not affect the measured EMF. A second consequence is that we can use solder to make thermocouple junctions and the third metal does not affect the EMF generated. This is great news because this makes it easy to make junctions in the field using normal soldering techniques. So now we know that we can add a meter. The question is, which way do we want to add the meter? And let's assume that meter uses a third metal so adding the meter adds two new dissimilar metal junctions. The little red boxes represent isothermal bars, which are at the same temperature. With isothermal bars, we apply the law of intermediate metals by making sure that the new intermediate dissimilar metal junctions are at the same temperature. Hopefully, you will see that the top option is the preferred method for inserting a meter into the circuit. The reason is that for both circuits, we will need a reference temperature, and the common practice is to use the temperature of the isothermal bar as the reference temperature. Uh, with the top option, we do not need an external reference temperature that we will need for the bottom option. The third and final law of thermoelectric circuits is the law of successive or intermediate temperatures. The important consequences of the law of successive temperatures are that we need to know the reference temperature. We cannot have two unknown temperatures. The second key consequence is that we need to know the metals being used and the relation between EMF and temperature for each metal. They are different for different metals. So we need to know the metals being used. As I mentioned before, if you have a simple two-wire circuit and you need an external reference temperature, the standard reference temperature is an ice bath. In the old days, before our modern electronics, there were standard reference tables that listed the EMF for each temperature, typically down to a hundredth of a degree Celsius. With modern electronics, we measure the temperature of the isothermal bar inside the meter with an RTD thermistor or an integrated circuit thermal transducer. Then we need to tell the meter which metals you are using so that the meter uses the correct equation to calculate temperature based on EMF measured. This slide illustrates how we connect thermocouples to our meter. We have an isothermal block which serves also as a reference temperature which we need to measure the other device. So if we need another temperature sensor in the meter, why we use thermocouple? Why not use the other temperature sensor? Well, the answer lies among the advantages of thermocouples you saw at the beginning of this video. Thermocouples are rugged, inexpensive, work over wide temperature ranges, and provide adequate precision. The other sensors, RTDs, thermistors, and integrated circuits have disadvantages that make thermocouples a popular choice. There are seven common different combinations of thermocouple wire. The coarse packet lists 
the seven combinations and their corresponding letter. You can read the characteristics in the course packet. The selection characteristics include the amount of EMF generated. More EMF is better. Nowadays, with our electronic devices and the capabilities of the microchips in them to easily handle polynomial, the nonlinearity is not a big issue. Finally, some thermocouple wires work better over different temperature ranges. For example, type J thermocouples are used for temperatures from minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 750 degrees Celsius. Well, type S is used for very high temperature up to 1,600 degrees Celsius. Junction, corrosion, and oxidation are important selection criteria too, especially when measuring temperatures in corrosive environments or at high temperatures. One of the disadvantages of thermoelectric circuits is that the relation between EMF and temperature is nonlinear. The polynomial equation used for type T thermocouples is a seventh order po polynomial. The coefficients are listed in the course packet. Note also that there are different polynomial coefficients for different temperature ranges. The course packet gives the polynomial efficient for temperatures from minus 200 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius, and for temperatures from zero degrees Celsius to 400 degrees Celsius. If you want the polynomial for other thermocouple wire combinations, you can go to the NIST website. This brings me to the end of lecture 15, section 2 video. The next video will cover practical thermocouple measurement issues.